Hello, I'm Nick Offerman, and welcome to Wood Support. At Mark Plays Games asks, please help settle an argument. Are woodworking aprons really necessary? Hashtag woodworking. Yes, they are. Any protective garment is, is necessary. I mean, it depends on what you're doing, but we wear aprons because they protect our civilian clothing from finishing products and just dust in general. And they have handy pockets in which you can store things like pencils, rulers, and your one-hitter. At Evan E. Richards asks, if I'm staining a big piece of red oak, do I need to use a pre-stain conditioner or will oak take the stain well as it is? Don't ever stain a red oak. If you're gonna stain it, get something cheaper than red oak. <laughs> use poplar. I hate stain. At Beast Thing asks, what books would you recommend for someone who wants to learn about woodworking? There's a lot of really good books. There's one that I happen to write uh, called Good Clean Fun. That's great for beginners. Woodworking in general has a lot of different specializations, but the ones that I would generally recommend would be anything by George Nakashima, a fellow named Tay Freed, T-A-G-E-F-R-I-D. At Mod Jam 515 asks, Good sir, wrapping up my first wood project to house guitar amp. Added second and final coat of poly. Do I sand again after dry? It depends on how good of a, of a brush worker you are. If you get a perfectly smooth finish, then you don't need to sand it again. Personally, I don't like the glossy shine that comes from most finishes. So after the final coat, I will at least scuff it with a, a 4 aught 4 zero steel wool or a super fine steel wool just to knock down the shine. But it all depends on how nice your finish is. At the Jimmy Chicago asks, what's your favorite shape of dovetail? That's an ignorant question because there's only one shape of dovetail. It is the dovetail shape. <laughs> but if you're asking maybe what's my favorite size of dovetail, I do like tiny pins in a dovetail layout. I think that's handsome and it belies a mastery of the form. At Atar underscore S asks, need advice on oil slash varnish that helps maintain look and feel of antique table over a hundred year old, but isn't prone to watermarking. There's a great set of books by a fellow named Bob Flexner on finishing that would be a much better resource than me. I dislike any finish, but some sort of oil varnish mix that's applied by hand. I would basically just up up your varnish in your proportion so that it has a higher protection. But if you can, uh, create a sample board and experiment with different mixes and then hold them up to the existing finish to see which one looks the most right. And use coasters. Woodworking Guys asks, Noob question, what angle should I cut a miter joint at? I would first address your grammar. Next time, try at what angle should I cut a miter joint? Traditionally, you're going for a 90 degree corner, so you always bisect your angle. So that would be a 45 degree angle. All your corners should add up to 360 degrees. So if you're making a picture frame, that's four times 90 degrees, that's 360. If you're making a hexagon, that's six corners. That means 60 degrees per corner. Bisected would be 30 degrees but generally a miter joint refers to 45 degrees. At Grant Rothberg asks, true or false, most adorable woodworking assistant ever? Looks like a clean diaper. She's proffering a two by two of some softwood, I'm guessing pine, which loses a couple of adorability points, but pretty cute. And one might ask, is that apron necessary? I'll give her a seven. Pretty cute. Also, I can't really approve her footwear, but she is cute. At PhotoDude24 asks, Master Crafter of Wood, period. I assume you're referring to me. I'm a student of the form, but I appreciate your optimism. 
I beseech thee, what kind of joint is this? It blows my mind. Funky form and function in an antique. I've seen this joinery in, in some antique drawers, and it's very cool looking and probably pretty effective, but I don't think it's that impressive because it's pretty clearly made by a machine. You can imagine a sequence of Forstner bits that have a hole in the middle to create this. I'm dubious that it's done by hand, and so dovetails are actually much more impressive than this. But it is very handsome. At Martin W. 17 asks, what's the best way to dry a fresh oak slab with minimum warp? I seem to have no success and cups a lot and with spacers and weight. Again, consider your grammar. Give your tweets a reread before you hit send. It just, you know, it helps us all comprehend our communications better. Drying wood is always a conundrum. It depends on the climate where you are. I do my best to seal the end grain to, to slow down the evaporation of the water through the ends of the end grain. You use a lot of spacers and weight. That's all I know how to do. If it's still cupping, maybe create a kiln of your own or find a friend with a kiln in the neighborhood and try to speed up the drying time a little bit. That usually can help it cure before the cupping can kick in. Otherwise, you can cut them a little fat and then plane them down to level once they've cupped a bit. But that potato chip effect is definitely a tough row to hoe. Good luck. This has been Wood Support with Nick Offerman. I'm not a master of the craft, but I have read some books. I hope it's been of some assistance. Measure twice, cut once.